How many people here think starting a business is a big risk? Just put your hands up. Right up. You think it's a... Why? I think there are, there are two types of risks. Um, well, it's the fear and uncertainty of the future. Um, and you have to create the future for yourself rather than uh, getting other people to do that. And you have to go through a learning experience to find it within you to do that. There's also a risk of actually not doing it. So kind of, um, you know, there's the, the problem about not knowing what would have happened uh, if, you know, if you haven't, if you don't start your own business, there's a risk you'll never know. There's a rather nice film out just now with George Clooney called Up in the Air. And he travels America firing people. He's very polished at it, very good. There's one little bit. He, he does it in a nice way. They're a professional firm of firers. You know, they walk in and they have the strategy for your future development. But there's one little bit where he says to somebody, what did they pay you first to give up your dreams? Now, it's a kind of cheesy line, and in the wrong hands, it's cynical. But he actually genuinely means it. And the guy goes... I wanted to be, whatever it was, a pastry chef. They paid me 1,300 bucks a year for this, and do you know what? I've hated every minute of it. And that's one of the things that has to come back. Now, one of the key things that we've got as reasons for people not starting businesses, time and energy. And I'll tell you this, when you're ready to start the business, it will come to you like a bolt from the blue. And there are reasons, and we've been working with One North East over this last year, with skilled professional people who could and should start a business but are not doing so. What stops them? Or what moves them forward? One, they've been passed over for promotion. Two, they've had a breakdown, a marital infidelity, or something has happened in their lives. Three, they have found a new idea and want to do something differently, or for it, they've just had enough. And it's the scale in which you are at that tips you over. And we worked with risk assessment people. And David, the risk specialist, had a wonderful line. He said, people are not frightened of taking risks. They are frightened of taking unmanageable risks. So the next question that I would ask you to start considering is, just how much do you know about what's involved in starting a business? If you've got, it's the time, then you're not ready to do it. Because where's the motivation? Where's the power to do all of that? And passion. How many people have an idea they are passionate about? Not awfully encouraging. Can we, can we, would you actually mind standing up and say, a desire to change or do something, if you are passionate about it, stand up. Yes, you do have to stand for this. <laughs> right. Now, how many people are curious about starting a business? Stand. Many people, oh, that's getting interesting. So, will the, those that are passionate sit down and those that are curious remain standing? Now, I'm going to ask you guys a question. You're curious, but what's stopping you from doing it? <laughs> Tell us a wee bit about yourself and why you're here. Uh, what's stopping me? Um, I do have a job at the moment. It's not very satisfying, but it pays okay, and I'm not sure I can do that working for myself. And also, I need the right idea that I'm going to get passionate about. Thank you, Yumi. You're safe. I'm going to tell you a little thing before we move on to Chris, which hopefully will help you. There's a wonderful man called Ernesto Sorori. Ernesto has been doing economic development and entrepreneurship for years, and he's Italian, and he started out in life working in overseas development. But he did psychology, and he did economic development, and he married the two together. And Ernesto came up with this wonderful thing he's called the Trinity of Management. And he said there are three things every business needs, 
And I want you to do this test just now. First of all, the three things are loving the product. The second thing is loving selling, not the product, but the joy of selling. And the third is, are you the kind of person that really loves figures? You will happily sit in front of a flickering screen in a pile of stats. And if people come in, you go, oh, God, go away. Let me get back to my figures. Now, with these three things, give yourself a score out of 100. Are you a person that loves figures? And we do it locked in a room every day of the week. Out of 100, for doing that sheer joy, what's the figure? Okay, just jot it down. Secondly, who loves selling? They don't care what it is. It's the thrill of the chase. It's getting the deal done. It helps to like the product and have integrity. But selling out of 100, what would you give yourself? And finally, loving the product. Mr. Browning, what are your scores? Figures, I have 34 out of 100. For selling, I have 12. Pathetic. And uh, for loving the product, I have 98. Okay. Therein lies the secret of a good entrepreneur. You don't have to do everything. There is a myth out there that in order to start a business, you need to go on a bookkeeping and marketing course. Forget it. If you love bookkeeping, go on it. If you love marketing, go on it. If you hate it, get somebody else to do it.